My name is Jackie Parch, and I work in the School Corps Outreach Program at Multnomah County Library. And uh, my coworkers will be introducing themselves when they talk. Um, but let's begin today with a land acknowledgement. This land acknowledgement is courtesy of Portland State University. We acknowledge that the lands we are on are the historic homelands of several bands of Chinook speaking people, including many Multnomah, Clackamas, and Watlata Cascade villages. There were also Kalapudia, Tualatin and villages nearby, and the Malala people in the Willamette Valley. Today, their descendants are primarily members of the Grand Ronde and Siletz Confederated Tribes with Chinook and other tribal relations at Warm Springs, Yakima, and the Chinook Nation. A number of Native American individuals and groups own land in Multnomah County on modern terms. Multnomah County is unceded Indian land and in this sense remains contestable space. In addition to the federally recognized tribes located primarily in the state of Oregon, we acknowledge the presence of numerous unrecognized tribes and indigenous groups whose stories also demand our attention. So this webinar is called Gotta Read This, New Books to Connect with Your Curriculum for K-5 Educators. Um, and this is a two-part webinar. So um, in today's webinar, today's Tuesday, we're gonna cover language arts, Geography and Multicultural Studies, Government, Politics, and Social Justice, World History and Community. And then part two of this webinar is on Thursday, and that will cover arts, US history, math, health and guidance, and science. And they are actually two separate webinars. So if you want to attend on Thursday um, and you didn't register for it separately, you'll want to do that. And I'll, a little bit later, I'll explain how to do that. Um, if you have any questions today, please put them in the Q&A section. Um, you'll see that on your toolbar um, rather than in the chat so that we can compile them. Otherwise, sometimes the chat moves by a little fast and we miss your questions. And we'll have time for questions and answers after the book talks. We're also going to be sharing some links with you in the chat. Um, but if you miss them, don't worry. Um, we're going to be sending everyone an email um, after the webinar so you can catch them there as well. This presentation is being recorded. You probably heard that. Um, so it can be viewed and shared later. The recording will be added to Multnomah County Library's YouTube channel, which you can see a screenshot of here. Um, and if you want to find it, if you use the search box down below here, um, that's how you can search our YouTube channel. And if you search for the words, gotta read this, you'll be able to find it when it's added in a week or two. Um, last week, we did a webinar called Talking Equity and Social Justice, and if you missed that one, um, it will be added soon to the YouTube channel as well. Soon, we're going to finish our novelties videos for educators, parents, and kids. These feature recent discussable fiction for grades four through eight, and when you fill out the evaluation at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to request to be notified when those novelties videos are available. Please think of this presentation as a teaser for what school core librarians can do for educators and what the library can do for this community. To use school core services, you need to live or work in Multnomah County because that's the tax base that funds us. But anyone can look at the book lists we've already made on our website. Multnomah County educators, if you would like lists of books and websites for your students, um, we're going to be sharing in the chat the link for our school core menu of services where you can find out more about that. And um, parents and homeschooling families, um, the library has a My Librarian service. We're also sharing the link for that, which can um, help you find the things that you need. Our Library Connect service is available to most school districts in Multnomah County. It lets students use their school ID number as a Multnomah County Library card number. Students can access the same resources as other library card holders without having to carry a separate library card. Um, and next week, we have some webinars about Library Connect, and we're posting the link in the chat to where you can go to sign up for those. Um, and at that same link, um, that's also where you can sign up for the second part of this webinar. So if you think you um, missed that, um, the, the sign up links to all of those are listed um, at the link we're posting. 
So the books that we are featuring today are ones that were published in 2021 and early 2022. We chose them based on awards that they had won, starred reviews, and also the relation to the curriculum of our local school districts. This workshop is for educators of grades K through five, but if you also work with middle or high school students, we'll be creating book lists of titles for those grade levels too. And this is something that you can request when you fill out the evaluation after the webinar. Um, we're going to be sharing a link to the book list for this webinar in the chat section. And on that book list, we've included the author and title for each book and the applicable grade level standards for each section. We've also included a range of grade levels with which the book could be used. We specified a wide span. Sometimes a book could be read out loud to younger children or read independently by older students. Um, and I've mentioned earlier, there'll be an evaluation at the end. Um, please fill that out as you leave. Um, you need to do this if you want to request a certificate as proof of attendance. Um, if you have any difficulties with the link when we post it at the end of the webinar, um, don't worry because we will also send you the link in your follow-up email. Um, and that email will also include all the links that we've been posting in the chat, as well as the link to the library's YouTube channel. So now let's go ahead and get started with books. Um, I'm going to do the first section, which is uh, language arts books. And uh, the first section here is poetry and short stories. The first book is Marshmallow Clouds, Two Poets at Play Among Figures of Speech by Ted Kuzer and Connie Wanick, illustrated by Richard Jones, grades four and up. Organized according to the four elements, fire, water, air, and earth, this illustrated collection of 28 poems is full of imagery and figurative language. Is that a tree on top of the hill clowning around and juggling a pie? Or is it just holding a squirrel's nest? Is a musician playing a harp or a giant golden moth? In a note at the end, the poets encourage students to use their own creativity and imagination when writing poetry. Black Boy Joy, 17 Stories Celebrating Black Boyhood, edited by Kwame Mbalia, grades four through seven. 17 black male or non-binary authors, including Jerry Craft, Lamar Giles, Varian Johnson, and Jason Reynolds contributed to this collection, which also includes poetry and comics. The content of the stories varies from everyday events like picking out a back to school outfit to competing in an intergalactic race, but all embrace the power of joy and the wonders of black boyhood. Hoop Kings 2, New Royalty by Charles R. Smith Jr grades three through six. This sequel to Smith's 2004 book, Hoop Kings, highlights 12 more recent NBA players, including Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and Steph Curry. The poems used varied structures and rhyme schemes, and notes at the end include more information on both the poems and the players. Um, the next section is going to be wordless books. I always put in a plug for wordless books every year. So some of you guys who attend yearly are probably tired of hearing me say this. Um, but wordless books, I think, are fabulous for teaching kids about like the structure of a story, beginning, middle, end, and those elements of a story like characters and setting and plot. Um, sometimes kids who struggle with reading have trouble identifying those things in, in printed text, but um, they're often able to understand them more thoroughly with a wordless book. So um, with that said, here are some great examples of wordless books. Every Little Kindness by Marta Bartol, grades K through two. A girl has lost her dog and is putting up posters in her neighborhood when she notices a street musician. Another man observes how the girl kindly shares her apple with the musician. And a few pages later, he's inspired to pick up a piece of trash on the sidewalk. And that little boy watching him, what will he be inspired to do? This wordless story shows how one act of kindness can spread through a whole community. The Midnight Fair, story by Gideon Stirrer, illustrated by Maria Chiara Di Giorgio, grades K through two. 
the forest animals have been watching all day while the humans have fun at the fair. Late that night, when all the humans have gone home, they sneak into the fairgrounds to try everything out for themselves. The games, the snacks, the merry-go-round, even the roller coaster. Will they be able to make it back to the forest before the humans return? Horizon, story by Daniel Vandiver, illustrated by Corey Begay, grades K through two. A Danette girl and her grandmother look through binoculars and notice that the herders have fallen asleep and their sheep are escaping. The sheep are far away, but fortunately the girl has a magical scarf to help her get there. This book includes helpful questions for adults to use to engage children while sharing it, and it concludes with a discussion guide and notes about the themes and imagery in the illustrations. And now we have some great examples of beginning readers. I Hop by Joe Cepeda, grades K through one. One day, a boy finds a pogo stick. Eventually, he figures out how to hop on it. Then he heads to the cheese shop and buys some cheese. Next, he gets some apples. Where is he going next? This beginning reader uses the very simplest language and tells much of the story through the pictures. Nothing Fits a Dinosaur by Jonathan Fenske, grades K through two. Mama says, please tonight, no dino drama. But this kid can't resist and transforms into a dinosaur while getting ready for bed. And being a dinosaur makes things tough. Regular clothes just won't fit. So the kid gets creative, sleeping bags for pants, pillowcases for socks, and a lampshade for a hat. Uh-oh, what will mama say when she finds out? Unlikely Friends, Beak and Alley number one by Norm Futi, grades one through two. Allie the alligator is perfectly happy living on her own in the swamp. One day, a very talkative bird named Beak shows up with all kinds of ideas of how they can spend time together. Allie's not even sure she wants to be friends with this noisy bird, but Beak invites her to his nest warming party. When she gets to the nest, another bird is in it. What's going on and what should Allie do about it? Fox at Night by Corey R. Tabor, grades K through one. Fox is all alone in his tent at night. Yikes, what if there are monsters outside? He takes a look through his binoculars and sees four stars, three planets, two big wings and two big pointy ears. Monster, cries Fox, but is it really a monster? The simple and repetitive text with plenty of visual support makes this book ideal for beginning readers. And then my last section of language arts here um, are all books about writing and language. Wonder Walkers by Nisha Archer, grades K through three. Two kids decide to go for a wonder walk. And along the way, they ask imaginative questions utilizing imagery and figurative language. Is the sun the world's light bulb? Is dirt the world's skin? Do caves have mouths? I wonder. Dear Mr. Dickens by Nancy Chernin, illustrated by Bethany Stancliffe, grades two through five. Eliza Davis admired the most popular author in her day, Charles Dickens, and appreciated that he often encouraged people to help the poor, but as a Jewish woman, she'd also noticed that his Jewish characters were always ugly, selfish, or worse. So she sat down to write him a letter to let him know how she felt. Dickens' first response to her was insensitive, so she tried again. And this time, her words made a difference. This title could be used to introduce persuasive writing or lessons on social justice. The Story of a Story by Deborah Hopkinson illustrated by Hadley Hooper, grades one through four. We've all been there. We need to write something, but the words just aren't coming. The boy in this book has all he needs, but it's easy to get distracted with someone else's stories until he sees a chickadee at the bird feeder outside the window. 
the bird takes the seeds one at a time to a nearby branch to eat. And then the boy realizes that's how he needs to write his story, one word at a time. The last page encourages kids to write a story about the chickadee themselves. In addition to the message about writing, this book is unusual in that it's written in second person. We Wait for the Sun by Dovey Johnson Roundtree and Katie McCabe, illustrated by Raisa Figueroa, grades one through five. Civil rights lawyer Dovey Johnson Roundtree shares a childhood memory in this book with luminous illustrations. Dovey's grandma wakes her before dawn and they journey through the woods to find the sweetest, ripest blackberries, which they finish picking just before sunrise. This title would be perfect to use as a mentor text for descriptive writing about an experience. And then my last book here is Abdul's Story by Jamila Tompkins Bigelow, illustrated by Tiffany Rose, grades K through two. Abdul can tell lots of great stories, but writing them down is something else entirely. Getting the shapes of the letters right is hard, and so is spelling and keeping his words on the lines on the paper. When an author visits his classroom, he shows Abdul his notebook, and guess what? It's messy too. After the author praises one of his stories, Abdul finally concludes, some people are writers and I am one of them. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn things over to my coworker, Tanya. Hello everyone, thank you for being here. My name is Tanya. I am a youth librarian with the school core team and I'm also bilingual. I do speak English and Spanish. And I'm going to be sharing books about um, geography and um, multicultural books. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, here we go. So the first one is um, Ruby's Reunion Day Dinner by Angela Dalton, illustrated by Justenia Sutherland. Um, this is for preschool, um, preschool to first grade. And Reunion Day is when Ruby's whole family gathers and shares. Sorry, I lost me, please. Here we go. Okay, so Reunion Day is when Ruby's whole family gathers and shares delicious soul food. Each family member is preparing their signature dish to bring to the Reunion Day dinner. Ruby approaches different family members offering to help them as they prepare their signature dish. One by one, they each tell her she's kind of young and maybe she can help next year. Feeling sad, Ruby heads outside and she spots something in the distance that sparks an idea. Maybe she can contribute her own signature dish after all. A Song of Frutas by Margarita Engel, illustrated by Sara Palacios, um, pre-K to second grade. A young girl accompanies her grandfather in Cuba, who is a street vendor, also known as a pregonero. They happily take their rolling cart through the streets of Cuba, rhythmically singing songs about their fruits to attract customers. Soon, the streets are filled with the songs of lively pregoneros selling tamales, herbs, candy, and all sorts of goods. Towards the end of her visit, the girl wishes relations between the U.S. and Cuba were better so she could visit more often. The author's note includes details about Spanglish, pregoneros, travel restrictions, and New Year's Eve traditions in Latin America. This book is also available in Spanish. My Two Border Towns by David Bowles illustrated by Erika Mesa, um, pre-K to second grade. So a young boy is awakened early in the morning by his father. They are going to go to El Otro Lado. Um, so they're gonna cross the border into Mexico. 
And the Mexican town that they cross into is a twin to the town where the boy lives. And English is sprinkled here and there. The boy and his dad eat delicious food and pick up goods for their family and friends. On their way back to the U.S., they stop to visit friends who are stuck between the U.S. and Mexico. The U.S. says there is no room for them, and Mexico says they can barely take care of their own people. On their way back to the U.S., the boy wishes his friends could travel back and forth, just like he and his dad. And this book is also available in Spanish. May Your Life Be Deliciosa by Michael Genhart, illustrated by Loris Lara. I'm sorry, Loris Lora, pre-K to third grade. So as a person of Mexican descent, I can honestly say that this book made me a little teary. It shares the special tradition of making tamales as a family, laughing, telling stories, and sharing our greatest wishes and desires for our loved ones during the holidays. The matriarch and beloved grandmother of the family leads the tamale making, connecting the values, hopes, and dreams the family shares to each step. My Day with the Panier by Ta Tammy Charles, illustrated by Sara Palacios, pre-K to third grade. It is Fallon's first um, Fallon's day to accompany um, Mama to the market. Mama wraps her head in a silk mochoir and places the panier on her head. Fall, uh, Fallon desperately wants to stand tall and hold the panier herself, but every time she tries, she drops it. Her mama tells her that birds build a bird builds its nest little by little. And like a bird, she can build up her ability to hold the panier little by little. The panier represents taking care of family and standing tall with grace, regardless of the load we carry in life. Oh, let's see here. There we are. Seven special something. A Nauru's story by Adib Kuram, illustrated by Zaina Faidi, um, pre-K to third grade. Kian and his family are getting ready to celebrate the Persian New Year, Nauru's. The um, Sofre Hapsin has been set up in the living room. It is a table set up with seven symbols of what will make the family happy in the New Year. When Kian tries to include just one more little symbol, his cat, Sunny, the symbols <laughs> are ruined and he tries to find new symbols that will bring his family happiness in the new year. The author's note includes more information about um, Nauru's. Arab, Arab All Year Long by Kathy Kemper, illustrated by Sasan Shalabi. Um, pre-K to fourth grade. This book celebrates the beautiful language, culture, and ethnicity those who identify as Arab share all year round, collecting um, soft grape leaves, listening to the dumbak, enjoying pomegranates, baking mamul cookies, drawing henna tattoos, and so many other traditions, old and new, are shared by so many Arabs around the world. Amira's Picture Day by uh, Reem Faruqi, illustrated by Famida Azim, kinder two through second grade. It is Eid, a special time of year, when Amira and her family dressed in their traditional clothes, they meet with friends and extended family at the masjid for a huge celebration and skip school for the day. When Eid conflicts with the class picture day, Amira becomes concerned. She doesn't want to miss out on the class picture. Can she find a way to both celebrate Eid and be part of the class picture? The last pages include an explanation of Eid, a glossary, 
and both the author and illustrators experience, experiences celebrating Eid. The Star Festival by Moni Ritchie Hadley, illustrated by Mizuhu Fujisawa. So um, Kiko and her mother and grandmother um, are excited um, because they are going to take part in the Japanese Star Festival. And they get ready by putting on their summer kimonos and grandmother retells the mythological story behind the celebration. At the festival, they enjoy the festivities and food, but they get disconnected from grandma in the crowd. As Keiko and her mother search for grandmother for the grandmother, Keiko connects their experience to the festival's mythological backstory. More information about the festival is included at the end of the book. Soul Food Sunday by Winsome Bingham, illustrated by CJ, I'm um, sorry, CG Esperanza, kinder through third grade. It is Soul Food Sunday and everyone is coming to Granny's house. A little boy follows his granny into the kitchen. She tells him he's old enough to help. And she um, helps him put on a, an apron um, or sorry, a, a chef jacket that his grandpa wore in the army. Together, they fix mac and cheese, uh, greens, and some meat. Although it is a lot of work, the little boy keeps going. Plus, Granny's praises are everything. Eyes That Kiss in the Corners by Joanna Ho, illustrated by Dunk Ho. Um, kinder through third grade. The little girl in this story notices that her eyes are different from her classmates. Her eyes kiss in the corner and glow like warm tea, just like her mama's, her ama's, and her little sister's eyes. When she looks in their eyes, she sees stories of love and joy. This is a beautiful book about self-love and a celebration of family and culture. The First Blade of Sweet Grass, a Native American story by Suzanne Greenlaw and um, Gabriel Frey. So Muskwan accompanies her grandmother to pick sweet grass, just like their uh, Wabunaki ancestors had done for generations. Muskwan's grandmother patiently imparts her knowledge and valuable lessons as she shows her how to pick the sweet grass. They will use the sweet grass to weave beautiful baskets. Author's notes include more information about the Wabanaki Confederacy, how sweet grass is used, and the importance of sweet grass to the Wabanaki. Um, Child of the Flower Song People, Luz Jimenez, Daughter of the Nawa, by Gloria Amesqua, illustrated by Duncan. Tonatiu, first through fifth grade. As a young girl, Luz Jimenez learned the ways, language, and stories of her people, the Nahua, the indigenous people of what is now Mexico and parts of Central America. Luz attended government-required schooling that sought to erase Native and children's indigenous ways. Yet, they could never erase her indigenous knowledge. The Mexican Revolution forced Luz and many in her Milpa Alta community to flee into Mexico City. Mexico City was home to many artists and Luz found work as a model. She became a popular model and through Luz, um, the world was able to see the beauty and strength of the Nahua. Eventually, Luz's dream of becoming a teacher came true. She was able to teach her Nawa knowledge and have her ancestor stories recorded in writing in her native tongue, Nawalt. This is um, the true story of how Luz Jimenez was able to preserve precious parts of her culture for future generations. Back matter includes an author's note, an artist's note, a timeline, a glossary, and a bibliography for further reading. Anita and the Dragons by Hannah uh, Carmona, illustrated by Anna Kuna, second through fourth grade. 
Anita, a Dominican girl who sees herself as a princess and airplanes as dragons, is getting ready to say goodbye to her treasured island of the Dominican Republic and her, gra and her grandma, her abuelita. Um, she will go to a distant land where there's electricity every night, hot water, and she will learn English. As she moves towards the dragon that will take her to this new land, she is scared and feels a huge knot on her throat. As she looks to her brothers and her parents, she realizes she is not the only one. Halal Hot Dogs by Susanna Aziz, um, illustrated by Parwinder Singh, uh, second through fourth grade. Musa's family takes turns after Duma prayer every Friday to share a delicious treat. Lately, they've been having some interesting treats, but this week, it's Musa's turn. While at the mosque, Musa's stomach is growling, and he cannot wait to get delicious halal hot dogs for his family. But when he's finally ready to buy the delicious treats, he runs into some obstacles. Will his family be able to do enjoy delicious halal hot dogs? A glossary at the end helps readers understand Arabic words and terms. There's also additional information about halal um, laws to better understand and, and what makes um, halal dogs different from other hot dogs. So um, that is the end of the multicultural um section um, geography and multicultural section and i will pass it along to leo awesome thank you so much tanya um i have some construction going on outside so i hope it's not too loud but um i'll just keep going in case it gets distracting um hi everyone my name is leo tate i work in school core um, as an indigenous program specialist and I'm gonna kind of continue some of our geography and multicultural books. Um, so the first book we have is Josie Dances by Denise Lajamadir. And this book is for grades pre-K through two. Josie can't wait to dance in her first powwow next summer. She is nervous and excited and she asks her mom and her aunties to help her make her dress, shawl and moccasins and her grandma to pray for her spirit name. This book is a beautiful celebration about all the details that go into preparing for a powwow and what it looks like when communities come together. Right. Tomatoes for Nila by Padma Lakshmi for grades kindergarten through three. Nila loves to cook with her Alma because it helps her feel connected to her family. In this story, Neela learns how to make a special tomato sauce with her mom. The text and illustrations make it feel like you're in the kitchen cooking with them, and you can even imagine the taste and the smell of the sauce. This book gives readers an appreciation for the little parts of the cooking process, from shopping for ingredients to eating and sharing with family. This is How I Know by Brittany Luby for grades K through five. How do I know spring is here? A young child wonders. This book follows the child and their grandmother as they observe and experience the different changing seasons. Written in Anishinaabe Moan and English, this book introduces young readers to the natural wonders of nature and passing of time. The Big Bathhouse by Kayo McClear grades pre-K through three. Mm -hmm. This book is about a young girl as she goes to the bathhouse with all the women in her family. Readers will notice how comfortable the people in the book are in their own bodies and how safe they feel around each other. This book has beautiful illustrations and is a celebration of bodies, family, and community. Prisoners of Geography. Our world explained in 12 simple maps written by Tim Marshall, grades four through seven. 
This book is a series of infographics that explain how different countries or regions of the world have been shaped by their different geographies. The author explores how different mountain ranges, bodies of water, or borders shape how nations and cultures interact with each other. If the World Were 100 People, A Visual Guide to Our Global Village by Jackie McCann, grades two through five. Each page of this book breaks down facts and information about world populations by posing statistics as if they were counting a group of 100 people. For example, the book says that if the world were 100 people, 11 people would have brown hair and three people would have blonde hair. With colorful illustrations and easy to understand facts, this book is perfect for the curious reader. Aureli is a Dreamer by Aureli Morales, grades pre-K through two. Aureli was born in Mexico and grew up with her grandmother in a mountain town surrounded by family. She moved to the US to join her parents in New York City when she was just a little girl. In New York, things were so different. She missed her abuela, she was still learning English, and school was difficult. What scared her most, though, was that some mean kids in her class called her illegal. What did that mean, she asked her mom. This book is a true story about the author's childhood, with a note about her experience as a doctor recipient. Bright Star by Yuyi Morales. A young fawn and their mother find themselves up against a border wall and shout in anger and frustration. Bright Star is about the plants, the animals, and ecosystems in the borderlands. It is also about the violence and disruption that borders and walls bring to these communities. Young readers will begin to understand the destruction that borders create and how this affects children, families, and animals. De Aquí Como El Coqui, or Coqui in the City, by Nomar Perez, grades pre-K through two. This book is about a little boy from Puerto Rico named Miguel and his friend Coqui, who is a frog. Miguel and Coqui do everything together. They play baseball, they go to the bakery, and they have family dinners. One day, Miguel's dad gets a job in New York City, and his parents tell him they are moving. In New York, Miguel misses his favorite parks, bakeries, and most of all, his best friend. Over time, Miguel realizes that there's a little bit of Puerto Rico and Coqui in New York. And this book is based on the author's own experience growing up. Indigenous People's Day by Katrina M. Phillips, grades one through two. Students may be curious about what Indigenous Peoples Day is and why people don't celebrate Columbus Day anymore. This book is straightforward, informative, and clearly written and tells young readers about Native history and why Indigenous Peoples Day is important. This is a must read for students and teachers who want to learn more about Native activism today and how we started celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. My first day by Foon Wien Kwong and Huan Kim Lin, grades K through three. This book is about a young boy who makes his first trip on his own through a flooded forest. Only at the end of the book will readers learn that the boy is on his way to his first day of school. The text describes his journey to school. The text that describes his journey to school is full of metaphors, such as the hallways of the forest and the chatter of the classroom of animals that hint at where this journey will lead him. Little Seeds of Promise by Sana Rafi, grades K through three. Maya and her family have just moved to a new country. She doesn't feel at home and the new country feels very unforgiving and hospitable. Before she left, her grandmother gave her a parcel of seeds and told her to bloom where she is planted. As the seeds that her grandma gave her start to grow into a flower, Maya slowly starts to feel more at home in this new place as well. Your Mama by Nonieka Ramos, grades pre-K through two. 
Spinning the Your Mama joke on its head, this sweet book celebrates mothers and all the wonderful things about them. Each page begins with the Your Mama refrain, highlighting an amazing quality about mothers. For example, your mama so sweet she could be a bakery. Young readers and parents will be delighted with the humorous take on this joke. Hannah and the Ramadan Gift by Qasim Rashid, grades pre-K through two. It is time for Ramadan and Hannah is eager to fast like the rest of her family, but her daughter John tells her she is too young. Instead, he teaches her about the important lessons and teachings of Ramadan, like showing kindness and generosity to neighbors. This book follows Hannah through Ramadan and her experiences with family and classmates. On the Trap Line by David A. Robertson, grades pre-K through three. On the Trap Line is about a young boy and his mushum or grandfather as they return to his mushum's trap line and childhood home. Mushum tells his grandson about how his family used to live and hunt in this area, teaching his grandson the Cree language until he had to go to school and learn English. This story is based on the author's experience with his own father and is about homecoming and reconciliation with place, land, and family. In the Spirit of a Dream by Aida Salazar, grades K through two. In the Spirit of a Dream is a collection of poems about 13 different immigrants of color. Each page is dedicated to a different artist, activist, or scientist, and is illustrated and written by different contributors. This bright, warm collection reminds young readers of the diversity of experiences and backgrounds of people in this country. We Are Still Here, Native American Truths Everyone Should Know by Tracy Sorrell, grades four through six. It's Indigenous Peoples Day and a group of Native kids from different tribes give presentations about different parts of Native history. This book is informative and teaches students about Native history, but is presented in a format that can be accessed by young readers. Each presentation of the students ends with the powerful refrain, we are still here. Nosotros means us, a bilingual story by Paloma Valdivia, grades pre-K through two. This sweet bilingual story is about the love between a parent and child. Even as both parent and child change and grow, the bond remains strong. And now I'm going to share some books about um, government, politics, and social justice. Our first book is Sharice's Big Voice, written by Sharice Davids. This is for grades pre-K through three. This book is about the childhood and career of Sharice Davids, one of the first Native American women in Congress and the first lesbian representative from Kansas. Davids is an enrolled member of the Ho-Chunk Nation, and in this book, she describes her love of Bruce Lee and martial arts, how she worked as a server to pay her way through college, and her experience as the only Native person in many spaces. She encourages readers to be bold and brave and stand up for what they believe in. Peggy Flanagan, Ogima Kwe Lieutenant Governor, by Jessica Engelking, grades four through six. This is a biography by Peggy Flanagan, who is the Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota. She is the first Native American woman to hold such a high elected office in the US. In this book, she talks about her childhood, how she overcame challenges to connect with her culture and her experience with activism. This is a great middle grade biography and is part of the Minnesota Native American Lives series. And there's also a book about Ella Carr Delore that you may have seen before. Forest Fire Fighter, the story of Chico Mendez by Anita Ganeri, grades two through five. Forest Fighter is a book about the life and struggles of Chico Mendez. Mendez grew up in the Amazon rainforest and from a young age worked as a rubber tapper with his father. He loved the forest, but as he got older, he saw how rubber tappers were being exploited by the companies that they worked for. 
He also saw how new businesses emerged that were destroying the rainforest in order to build pastures for profit. He decided to fight back. He taught his friends and fellow workers to read and organized workers' unions and empates or obstacles to block companies from destroying the rainforest. This is a wonderful book about his activism and the work he did to protect the Amazon rainforest. Together We March, 25 protest movements that marched into history by Leah Henderson, grades four through seven. People have had to find strength in numbers and collectively amplify their voices to bring awareness to the injustices in our world throughout world history. This is a story of many of those movements from 1903, when children walked with Mother Jones to fight against cruel child labor practices, to 2020, after George Floyd was murdered at the hands of police and people took to the streets to declare Black Lives Matter. Short stories of well-known and obscure movements from all over the world are included, describing their diverse participants and quotes from organizers and leaders. Henderson calls out the connections between movements and repeated injustices throughout time due to unchanging conditions and mindsets. Call Me Miss Hamilton, One Woman's Case for Equality and Respect by Carol Boston Weatherford. Mary Hamilton always had a fiery spirit and a passion for justice. This book is about her activism during the civil rights movement and her fight to demand respect in the courts. During one of her trials, the judge refused to call her Miss Hamilton, instead referring to her more informally as Mary. She refused to respond to him and was jailed for contempt of the court. This is about her fight and eventual win to ensure African-Americans were given equal respect in the courts. Shirley Chisholm Dared, The Story of the First Black Woman in Congress by Alicia D. Williams. This book tells the incredible story of bold, daring, and gutsy Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman in Congress. From a young age, Chisholm wasn't afraid to stand out and speak her mind. She excelled in school, went to college, and became a teacher. She was always politically involved, whether learning from her dad and his friends as a little girl, being part of political clubs at her college, or fighting for better housing and education in her neighborhood. This beautiful book will inspire readers to never back down and to speak their minds. All right, so that is all that I have for my section. I am going to pass it back to Tanya for some books about world history. Thank you, Leo. All right. All right, so world history. Um, the Passover Guest by Susan Guzzo, illustrated by Sean Rubin. Um, it is the height of the Great Depression and Muriel uh, lives in Washington, DC and she's strolling through her hometown. And although it is Passover, she is not in a hurry to go home. Um, this year, her family, neighbors, and friends are not able to afford the traditional holiday feast, the Passover Seder. At the Lincoln Memorial, she comes across a street for, performer, and he tells her he, she should hurry home because you never know. Maybe the family will be able to celebrate Passover. When she arrives at home, there's nothing to eat, but there's a knock on the door. And there, and it's the mysterious street performer. All of a sudden, they have so much food. Everyone is in the community is able to enjoy the Passover miracle feast. Um, so this book includes notes about the Passover holiday, uh, the Great Depression, and the Jewish community in Washington, DC. Um, Wishes by Moon. Man, illustrated by McDonough, Nye, uh, first through third grade. This is the story of a mother and her children leaving their home in Vietnam in secret in the wee hours of the morning. They say goodbye to their loved ones, goodbye to their home, and they journey for miles and climb onto a boat that is too small. They put their lives in danger, crossing the treacherous seawaters 
an unrelenting sun in hopes of finding refuge in a new place. This book is inspired by the author's experience. Um, the author's note includes uh, the author's experience and hopes. It also includes a note from the artist explaining the process of creating such compelling imagery. Uh, from the Tops of the Trees by Kalia Yang, illustrated by Rachel Wada, first through third grade. A young girl is born in a refugee camp in Thailand, and she passes her time playing with her cousins while soldiers exist on the periphery of everyday life. During the quiet times, she hears her aunties talk about having to flee their land and how they're not wanted in Thailand, but are scared to go to a new country. One day, the girl asks her dad if the whole world is a refugee camp. Her dad has no answers for her. The next day, her dad um, the next day her dad has her climb onto his back as he um, struggles to climb up a tall tree. He shows her that there is so much world beyond the camp. And one day she will be able to journey far into the world beyond places her father has never seen. This story is based on the author's real life experience. A plan for the people, Nelson Mandela's hope for his nation by Lindsay McDivitt, uh, illustrated by Charlie Palmer, second through fifth grade. Nelson Mandela was a young attorney who experienced firsthand the injustice of apartheid. He joined the African National Conference, sorry, the African National Congress and took action to bring freedom to black South Africans. Freeing the power of the movement, the white government jailed Mandela for 21 years, but not even that could stop Mandela. This is the biography of Nelson Mandela's long suffering journey to bring forth a more free and just South Africa. Latinitas, Celebrating 40 Big Dreamers by Juliet Menendez, third through sixth grade. This is a compilation of 40 short biographies about Latinas who worked hard and dared to live their dreams. The Latinas included, uh, included are from all parts of Latin America. Some are from the past and some are still defying the naysayers and breaking glass ceilings today. Um, this book is also available in Spanish. Soul Lanterns by Shaw Kuski, grades fifth through eighth grade. Through a series of unrelated events, Nosomi and her friends are discovering that those around them who experienced the bombing of Hiroshima are still emotionally and physically affected by the bombing, even though it happened 25 years ago. Nozomi and her friends ask survivors to share their personal stories, to learn about their past, and to create an art exhibit in honor of them and their experiences. Um, their stories are interspersed in the novel um, to help readers gain an understanding of what happened during that time period and the effects of war. The Barefoot Dreams um, of Petra Luna by Alda P. Dobbs, fifth grade and up. It is the 1910s and Mexico is going through turmoil. It is the beginning of the Mexican Revolution. With violence and death at every turn, Petra, her grandmother, little sister, and baby brother have no choice but to flee to the United States on foot with only the clothes on their back. They experience hunger, a harrowing journey, and racism from their very own compatriots because of the darkness of their skin and their indigenous roots. Petra wants to go to school one day, but her grandmother tells her she should accept her lot in life. School is not for indigenous people like them. She should prepare to marry and be happy to do whatever her husband says. Petra bravely leads her family out of harm's way and dares to dream something different for herself. Her story, um, this story is inspired by the author's Mexican ancestors 
journey to the United States. And I will pass it on to Jackie, who will be sharing books about community. All right. Thank you, Tanya. Let me share my screen with you. I'll also mention to everyone right now that um, this is the last section for today. So um, if you have a question that you would like to ask, um, this would be a great time to put it in the Q&A spot. So that will be ready when we're done with this section. Okay, let's see if I can get my slides to advance here. There we go. All right, so these books are all about community. Res Dogs by Joseph Ruchak, grades three through six. Maliana is visiting her grandparents on a Wabanaki reservation when the COVID pandemic hits and travel shuts down. During her extended stay, she helps her grandparents use, learn to use video chat, and she learns from them by hearing them share traditional stories. One morning, one of the res dogs shows up at their door, and Maliana is sure he's there to help protect them. This story highlights the ways her grandparents' community has cared for one another in the past and how that continues today. Something Good by Marcy Campbell, illustrated by Corina Lucan, grades K through three. When something bad is written on the bathroom wall at school, a group of students feel worried, confused, angry, and sad, wondering who would do such a thing. Through discussion, poetry writing, and a group art project, they work to heal their community. The Water Lady, How Darlene Arviso Helps a Thirsty Navajo Nation by Alice B. McGinty, illustrated by Chanteau Begay, grades pre-K through three. One morning when Cody wakes up in his home in the Navajo Nation, he notices that all the family's water barrels are empty. He's thirsty, but his grandmother tells him not to worry. She knows something he does not. Meanwhile, miles away, Darlene Arviso is filling up her tanker truck. She's going to be delivering water, and Cody's house is her first stop. The water lady's here, Cody cheers. This story of a woman who plays an essential role in her community also touches on the issue of water insecurity. Stroller Coaster by Matt Ringler, illustrated by Raul III and Elaine Bay, grades pre-K through one. When Sam feels like the inside is too small and everything is going wrong, her dad takes her on a stroller coaster ride around the neighborhood, through the park, and into the tunnel they go. Detailed illustrations provide lots for kids to look at, and many also include Spanish words. Just Help, How to Build a Better World by Sonia Sotomayor, illustrated by Angela Dominguez, grades one through three. Every day, Sonia's mother asks her, how will you help today? Today, Sonia is taking supplies to school that the students will pack up and send as care packages to soldiers serving far away. And she's not the only kid who's helping. Brooklyn is collecting plastic bags to keep them out of the ocean. Jasper is donating toys to the children's hospital and Simone and her family are campaigning for their favorite candidate. This title is sure to inspire kids to contribute to their own community. Dream Street by Tricia Elam Walker, illustrated by Ekua Holmes, grades K through three. Walker and Holmes are cousins and were inspired to write this story from memories of their own neighborhood. Readers will meet Azaria, who can do double dutch one leg at a time, Zion, who loves to visit the library, and Mr. Sidney, who reminds everyone, don't wait to have a great day, create one. This could be used as a springboard for students to write about people in their communities. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing here. That wraps up what we have to share with you in today's workshop. So um, if you have any questions for us, please add them to the Q&A. Um, I don't see that there's anything in there yet. Um, and we're also going to be putting a link to that evaluation in the chat. Um, so please fill that out. It helps us to improve our workshops. Um, it also allows you to request that certificate of attendance um, if you need one. 
and we will email you your certificate within a couple of weeks. Um, it comes from a real person, our assistant, Brandon, who creates them for you. Um, he says to make sure to use an email address that you check during the summer, because whatever emailed address you put on the survey, um, that's where he will send it to. Um, and um, if you have trouble accessing it um, through the link in the chat, um, we will also um, send you that email afterwards that has the link to the survey, um, as well as all the links that we shared in the presentation and the link to the library's YouTube channel where the recording of this webinar will be posted. Okay, let's have a look um, in the Q&A. Oh, that's a great question. It's how do we request curriculum boxes if we work in a Portland district? So um, let me really quickly, I will put um, in the chat, um, we have a page that we call assignment alert. Um, and I am really quickly gonna... I can do it, Jackie. Oh, thank you. And that link would be where you would go to fill out and request um, a book bucket from us. We make book lists and then we can send a copy of each book on the list um, to um, the library location, Multnomah County Library location of your choice. And it takes, um, I would say, you know, a, about two weeks lead time or so. Um, so if you know that you're um, going to be um, wanting something for around the beginning of the school year, it's, it's never too early to start asking about it now. All right, let's see. Is there anything else? All right. Not seeing anything else, we'll wait for another minute or two to allow anybody else a chance to type anything if they want to in the chat and the Q&A. Um, I put the evaluation form in there um, into the chat so you can um, start filling that out if you would like. One thing I heard recently about doing webinars is that um, it's helpful to allow people a little bit of time at the end to fill out the evaluation form. So <laughs> uh, we still have a, it, we, this webinar goes till 315. So you have plenty of time to fill it out during the actual webinar time. <laughs> okay, we'll maybe wait about one more minute. See if we get any more questions. Oh, you know what? Um, I think the evaluation form might, let me make sure that it goes to everyone here. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, we always enjoy doing this every year and we hope that we'll see you for the other half um, on Thursday. Um, and I'll be sending you a follow-up email soon. All right, goodbye everybody, thank you.